I'm going to add Slavoj T. All right, this is uh, Shit Spouter 37. This is Black.com Pills. This is the Fed Post. Like the uh, the Invisible Man, the Cheech and Chong movie. <laughs> <laughs> wait, the, oh, wait, I'll break the rules. They they do video, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a video stream. Usually, I'll, I'll have uh, my Ninja Turtle avatar, like everybody knows, Mask Bastard. But sometimes I'll put on the. Like I'll do that on the live streams on my thing too. I'll do the the Ninja Turtle, but a bit a lot. But sometimes here lately, I've been doing the uh, the Luchador mask. Like I'll sit there and hold court wearing the Luchador mask. Hey, nice, nice. Yeah, I was worried about like because we haven't shown our faces, so I was like, they were asking me on. I was like, I'm you always not have to masks, show my face. son. That's the move. Might pull up with the MF Doom mask or something. Yeah, yeah. We had a guy. <laughs> we did a Berserk stream Friday, and the dude had uh, there was another mask bastard on there, and I, I can't remember what his name was now but he had like a donnie darko mask on <laughs> like the the bunny yeah. or the yeah like the bunny thing hey, and nice. then my friend stain he'll come on uh, him and monoxus and they'll do uh they have their masks on too i don't think they've been uh i think stain's been on, on live on camera but i don't think monoxus has uh has done on camera stuff they they stream on saturdays and I want to say Wednesdays. I know, I know for sure they stream Saturdays on their Twitch channel. Well, I like the idea of using like a physical mask because I'm like c- completely computer illiterate. So like I open up Zoom and I have no clue how to even like how to get a little placeholder image on there. Like I went on with the Rare Candy guys and I was trying to like make my icon yeah, be the thing same. on the picture. Yeah. And then it was just like and then it just Not popped working. me up. Yo, and I was I just learned, like staring at the guys. <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, yo, don't look. <laughs> yo, I watched the Irishman uh, the other night. And, uh, yeah, I ain't caught it's that pretty one good, yet. man. I watched. I good, like it. I watched Goodfellas the other night. All right, let me tell you about Goodfellas. <laughs> Yo, Goodfellas. Goodfellas. Goodfellas is based. All based right, as fuck. and it's based on a true story. <laughs> like there's a kernel, double base. Yeah, there's a kernel of truth to Goodfellas. Oh, absolutely. But, uh, damn, what, every the Jewish broads will fuck your life up. Well, not just that, but uh, you know the the, the 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 basics, the kernel of the story about. You know, these three friends that are in the mafia and low level guys who sort of work their way up. And the movie does just kind of makes it seem like the, the Joe Pesci character was killed because they put that hit on the guy because they, they killed him and put him in the trunk and he was a made guy. Right. In real life, uh, that character was supposed to have uh, forced himself on the uh, the Ray Liotta character, Henry Hill's wife. Oh. And so that's what the hit was over. Oh. Based. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Oh, that's what really happened in real that's life. That's what really happened. Yeah, it's oh. a crazy, crazy story. Yeah. What, imagine the- imagine being played by Joe Pesci in a movie and they toned it down. Holy <laughs> shit. On the real guy. That's the, you know, you want to talk about absolute mad lad. Right there you go, son. <laughs> That's how mad a lad you got to be for the movie. Henry. So Henry Hill's based on... A oh, real no, fella Hen- by the name of Henry Hill. By Henry... Right, right, right. Henry Hill. Yeah, he right. sells him a lot of propane, propane accessories. Well, he, he would call <laughs> in Howard Stern all the time, this fella. He would call in to Howard Stern and talk about how, yeah, I never killed nobody when I was in the mafia. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's like OJ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah but yeah. if I did... If I did. Yeah, if I did, yeah. though, this is how I would have done if it. I Make a movie. God, if I did we'll do the about, Latanza heist, right? <laughs> yeah, we were talking about OJ. You want to talk about... The best thing to come out of OJ was uh, our guy, New Jack. New Jack, the professional wrestler. Yeah. I think the week or two after it happened, goes up in front of a crowd in the middle of Tennessee and talks and, and talks lovingly about how great OJ was <laughs> and how wonderful it was that, that, that he needed to do more people. New Jack's the dude that just used to throw a garbage can into the That into was the part of it, like yeah. full New of Jack, weapons. New Jack, did, <laughs> New Jack has lived a life, okay? New Jack, before he was ever a wrestler, had four justified homicides as a bail bondsman. <laughs> <laughs> you like said that, justified ho- homicide. So Just, yeah, justified homicides where either they pulled a gun or attacked you or you know whatever it is. When it went to court, it was legitimate. When it, when the court went through everything, like all right, New Jack, I guess you killed that guy because you had to. <laughs> The bitch yeah, it's the like bitch Gucci. Was it's up. like, man, they were trying to take my ice, bro. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, yeah, I feel <laughs> that. <It's> just <laughs> killed four people. You know, Scott Hall only killed the one guy in the parking lot, and I think he got a justified homicide because he was a. Uh, I, I, I mean, this is second hand. I believe he was a bouncer at a titty bar, was walking one of the girls <laughs> to the car and because she was scared of this one weird dude. Dude comes up, starts talking shit, and he he goes to pull a gun. 
Scott Hall gets the gun first off off the dude's side, puts it under the guy's chin and blasts him. Done. So to right be a professional wrestler, body. you just got to like justifiably murder somebody and have it on your resume. I mean, and it, you just it, turn it, it into well, WWE well, on your CV. Uh, I think uh, Vader, Vader has the best story about how he went, tried out for professional wrestling. He went backstage at a wrestling show, said he had on his cowboy hat and cowboy boots, thought he was hot shit. You know, went back, made his way backstage and uh, he just said, hi, boys, how you doing? And adjusted his Super Bowl ring and showed it to everybody. <laughs> I want to say he played for the Rams. Let me, look, let me make sure I'm, I'm not talking out of school here. Vader, L.A. Rams. Oh, you're fine. I talk out of school all the time. I say shit that's just definitely not <laughs> yeah. true. Yeah, he was like, well, <laughs> he was yeah this is a podcast. Come on. I go out of my way to spread center, misinformation. Center for the L.A. Rams. So, uh, yeah. We've got no Jamie here to back us up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, Chris Benoit, like, was that, what, was he, like, right. mentally ben, ill or? All right, so Benoit had multiple so. things or was going that just, on. It sounded justified to me, but. So, I, all right. <laughs> so one of the best pieces of tape I saw this week was they had a clip of, I don't know if this was, was right around when it happened, but it was a clip of New Jack, the Iron Sheik, and for some fucking reason, the Honky Tonk Man, all three sitting in a room, all three clearly having had a few beers in them riled up ready to talk about chris benoit and what happened and so the boys start going off about how you know you got to kill a girl like you do what you got to do king like like, yo there's a lot of gals i wanted to kill this this is (laughs) (laughs) just locker room talk locker room yeah yeah yeah. he's he's like you know you got to do what you got to do but don't kill the kid you (laughs) son of a bitch what the fuck's the matter with you gonna kill the kid yeah have some and then the iron sheet cuts a promo on it iron sheet starts going oh you killed daniel you killed the boy uh, yeah, <laughs> why would you do such a thing you killed him you killed sweet Nancy oh, you bastard. and then New Jack New Jack says fuck you and fuck you he don't need to be killing no bitch I knew Nancy I was a friend of Nancy and fuck him this starts going hard he says, yeah, you know, you couldn't have just hit her. You couldn't have hit the bitch and said, adios, muchacho, snap your bags and left. Oh, because New Jack's as based as can be, you know, like New Jack didn't hold any. <laughs> He's killed back. four people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we know yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and he goes off like that for a long time about how, you know, you're going to kill a bitch and then you're going to kill a kid, you son of a bitch. It just went off. And, uh, you know, my own thoughts on the situation, I think, uh, well, he probably shouldn't have killed either of them. Sure. He probably, he probably, sure. probably should have left and cleared his head. Probably could have, he could have done many other things. Okay. There, there was yeah. a lot, there was a lot of drug use going on. Uh, uh, honky talk man brought up a detail that I hadn't heard before about, uh, Nancy being tied up woman. Uh, she was supposed to have been tied up. So that was part of the story. I had not heard that part before. I had heard, uh, Chris Jericho had the, uh, the sister on woman's sister because that the woman is uh what nancy's name was when she was uh, a wrestling valet she was like a man she just went by the woman she was just woman yeah <laughs> that was that was her name okay. and so she would come in uh with like a m kind of thing with whips and chains and leather and that kind of shit and the honky tonk man said yeah you know she was kind of living the gimmick into being tied up and all this stuff but new deck thought yeah that's bullshit i just ain't living the gimmick she knows what she's doing you know it's a whole thing uh there's there's multiple things going on with, with why benoit did that first of all you got to be a crazy killing son of a bitch to be ready to kill your wife and kid like you don't do that shit just because you you know you wake up one day and like oh all this brain damage I've got's made me a killer. No. Well, yeah, you I'm seeing this stuff about the, the, You got to have some real genuine evil in you to even be capable of that kind of shit. Yeah, I've seen the the motives are like the CTE concussion. Yeah, yeah. Or Aaron Hernandez pilled. So his uh, so the CTE <laughs> stuff. I definitely think that had to help. That that didn't. That has to be a contributing factor to it because this son of a bitch would would do a move called the flying headbutt where he would jump off the, the top <laughs> row. Holy shit. Off Can't the top good. turnbuckle, <laughs> straight into a some bitch's head. So he would essentially land almost face Jesus. first and give himself whiplash every night. <laughs> And that yeah. was one of his Sounds signature reasonable. moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they the WWE has banned such moves. But uh, but what 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 caused you to get uh, suspended recently? DMCA what? takedowns. I was targeted by somebody who is notorious for this sort of thing. I don't want to say who, but uh, there there's a couple of suspects floating around. 
on who it was that done the deed. So what's no DMCA fault, mean? So a DMCA takedown is uh, what they call the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. You can say that you own the copyright to a song or something and say, oh, this guy, they posted my shit. Gotcha. To, you know, get this pulled down. That's what gotcha. started Gamergate. As you'll recall, really, uh, Monday Matt did the story about uh you know there's a game developer who wrote a big blog about how his girlfriend cheated on him and she was also a game developer with all these you know game journos and all these people and (laughs) the girl that he had cheated on with she struck the story down she's like no 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 we got to strike this video this is no good this this we can't we got to pull this from the internet and so then sargon and all the other boys they report on well did you know that this gal strike this down and so then it snowballs from there is this zoe quinn or is this another yeah yeah okay. yeah, yeah. yeah that's the yeah. gamergate thing and yeah, so yeah. that that sort of opened up everybody's eyes to look into what game journals was up to and then like the game journal pros thing come out where it was so you had all the boys from like ign destructoid one up all these different outlets GameSpot. they were all in, in uh one group chat like the google group called game journal pros where they would talk about what stories they were going to cover and what stories they weren't so they would blacklist people they would blacklist topics very uh you know you, you think about a free and honest press that seems like the opposite of it the idea <laughs> right, that, that, right. that somebody can just post like nah i don't like what slab's up to i don't we're gonna we're gonna we just gotta get rid of this guy huh i did not know this dmca thing had to do with gamergate that's interesting all roads yeah, lead well, back to gamergate right well i mean it's just on my mind somebody brought it up today because i i uh i asked zoe a question once and it became a news story what uh what do she you mean? said she got a job uh, i'll post it in our group chat she got a job on uh making some other game and i asked the question about what happened to the fmv game and she said oh you know I've run out of money it was the whole thing and i put i posted the the shock pikachu image let me pull it up on my phone here oh because i know i've got a bookmarked on here one percent battery surely i can get this out that's mad funny you send a meme and it ends up on the news like <laughs> well it ended up on certain gaming news websites like it became like a hot thing and like uh you remember mom bot mom bot picked up the story no mom bot was that a she game? was uh she had the evangelion robot as her avatar on twitter she was particularly harsh about going after people's asses and exposing people and not taking shit from people. Ooh. They ended up getting her with a DMCA thing, too. And she she was unlike me, was like, you know what? I'm just done with this shit because she actually was a mother from Japan. Like she was she had kids and she didn't want to play no more. She was done. Gotcha. Gotcha. But me, I'm full of piss and vinegar. I'm ready to go. Son. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got shit to say and I ain't holding back. You know, the whole world's going to hear about mask bastard. Yeah, yeah, damn, man. Yeah, I mean the whole the whole Gamergate thing is really, really dark, dark chapter in, in American history. I feel like. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like that's that's the way they're gonna write about it. Like, oh, can you believe that these racists reported on stories accurately <laughs> and exposed the things that people were doing that were shitty and talked about them openly? Yeah, Slav was never the same after Gamergate. It just yeah. completely changed. <laughs> he just Slav completely... came out a whole other man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was a liberal came... before that. <laughs> yeah, he came out. Now he's on the Fed post. He came out. He came out of the closet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what but... Gamergate does to a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's a whole thing. Like there's, and and I think the truth somewhere in the middle. You know, like there's there's bad guys. There's a lot of good people on both sides. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll do the Donald Trump thing. There's a lot of right. great people on both sides. Right, right. Very fine folks. Very fine folks, but there's a lot of some bitches on both sides too that I can't stand. <laughs> speak on it. I mean, I don't even like I don't even know that there's a lot of good people on like the on like All the right, game journal well, side. I think I think they're just like I think they're just like ignorant like if we're like, going to say good people, are there any good people period? Yeah, yeah I really qualify any, that with an asterisk. Yeah, flag. what is what defines a good person? What makes what makes you guys good? Of course there's good people. I say I'm good. There's From there's definitely there's definitely Your good people in the world. Good. Yeah, but my point of view is the correct one. Oh, well, in that case. Correct opinion ever. That's <laughs> <laughs> in the name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, I don't believe in, uh, I, I just don't believe in, in uh, that, you know, 
qualifying anything like that. So, but yeah, I mean, I guess you have to sort of think you're a good person to stay, uh, stay sane. But, uh, well, I I'll tell you this, man, there's, there's the difference between person and persona, like the actual guy, Charles Kahn and the goofy shit posting the going after celebrities and talking trash online. Like that is two very different people. The, the rock said it best said, you know, <laughs> if you're going to play a character, you know, the best characters are the ones, the, the best wrestling characters are the ones that take your own personality and just adjust the volume all the way up. Right. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. 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 That so makes, yeah, I, yeah. 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 I think online we're all kind of like uh, personas of ourselves to a degree. I mean, people right. tell me I sound different on Twitter than, than talking on the pod or so that makes sense. Well, that's the commodification in effect right there. Like, well, yeah, of just like being yourself that you're now like, you're no longer yourself. You're like a market actor on this online, like new virtual marketplace, right. and you're trying to sell yourself and your you, ideas. Well, you got to get over. Shit. You have to use the wrestling term again. Getting over with a crowd. Everywhere you go, you got to always be closing. You got to be right. saying loud and proud. Charles Kahn, masked bastard, host of the meme stream. Ring that bell <laughs> loud and proud. <laughs> and we did a couple heel turns. We did a, you know, we started. A, we started as the face, the lib face, and then. You know, it's the Nazi face. heel turn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's how we won over all our, our audience. But, uh, but, but yeah, I mean. Trojan horse them. Well, but, but the thing, too, is also there's a character limit. Like, you can't really say, you can't really expound too much or use any, like, inflection on Twitter. So, like, if well, it's short no bursts tone. of your thought. Yeah, there's no tone. My friend, short uh, so there's a fella who became a meme. I won't say who, but he, he said, you know, the best thing about uh he, he was talking about why he became, you know, how he became the meme. He's like, you know, I don't, I don't, they're not doing me as this thing. They're doing a reaction to stuff with this image. And so he said, it's because you can't really convey tone in the text, but you can use an image to be like, all right, this is, this is a representation of how I feel as I'm saying this. So you understand, oh, this is coming off as sarcastic or, oh, this is coming off as serious or, you know, uh, that's the, right. for me, it's, I always use niche turtle shit. Like, have you seen me? I use all right. caps. Or I use like uh, I capitalize certain parts of the words to like try to add like emphasis on the cadence. Well, so see that was that comes from comic it. books. Comic books will have like one word all capital letters or bold to really give it that oomph, you know, like mm-hmm. that that emphasis. Right. Yeah, right, onomatopoeia right. type shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, onomatopoeia is like whenever you know you think about uh, the '60s, Batman had a, a actual fight where they would have onomatopoeia. Yeah. Thing, you know, pow! Bang! <laughs> pop! Zap! Zigow! Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah, that's what it sounds like. Fuck, sure. Man. You want to talk about some funny shit? I don't think there's anything as funny as Batman. It was in the the, the '66 movie they did, where Batman is trying desperately to get rid of a giant cartoon bomb, and every <laughs> he turns, there's always some new bullshit. He goes, he goes, to throw it somewhere up. There's nuns. I can't throw it there. Oh, there's. He goes, to throw it off a damn pier. Oh, baby ducks can't do that. There's a goddamn Oompa Loompa band. He, he's being chased by them. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, you can't go it that way. There's a baby in a stroller. And he just looks at the camera with this bomb going and goes, some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, this is relatable a content. Yeah, yeah, we've Return all been Return to tradition, before. man. Return to tradition now. Now it's all weirdo like there's, shit. There's room in the world for the dark and serious and brooding bullshit Batman like this. This Let's take the material serious. But there's room in the world for fun Batman, too, where Batman <laughs> is a, a fun, light character who's kicking the shit out of bad guys. Right. But there's no room in the world for the Ben Affleck Batman. Man, let's go ahead and get that one out well, of here. I'll tell you this. I don't think there's room in the world. I don't know what's going on with Batwoman. Oh, Batwoman God. seemed like a bad bad <laughs> idea, woman. Wait, is that a movie yeah. coming out? That's a TV no, a show TV, yeah. that's been out for at least two or three years. They had a they had like a, a I'm going to be nice. She had uh, she had a haircut that, that made her look more masculine than I do. She looked like a, <laughs> she had the chop. Yeah, she had like the side cut, like uh, very masculine looking gal. Horrible actress. Like I haven't seen anything with her in it that I actually I think she was in the like the she second looks, or third John Wick movie. She's got that look like somebody slid a plate of shit under her nose and she got a good whiff of it. <laughs> right. She's got right. that look. You know, that look the gals yeah. would get, you know, that. Mm. Oh, oh. 
Well, she I has that really effect that's like, I'm a yeah. serious, tough and woman. It's and it's just kind of like, all right. I, I watched about 20 minutes of one was like, what the hell is this shit? I turned it off. I turned <laughs> well, it off. they already then, lost her. They already right. lost the she actress left. and they replaced she, her with a strong black girl. Right. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And I got uh, that was one of the ones I pulled on the quartering was on the announcement. I wrote under there, oh, my God, it's black woman. She looks just like me. I wrote it like like <laughs> capital letters. He read it out on the damn on uh, one of his videos. I got the clip somewhere. Oh, we have no black we have woman. no choice but to stand black woman. She looks just like me. Like it's a whole thing. Mm. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I just I didn't know this was a show. I just looked it up. I yeah, saw it's a real ones. show. And the show's premise is as stupid as can be. So it's Bruce Wayne's yeah. cousin who is a cop or something. She finds uh, like Batman dead so she somehow goes to the bat cave and takes all his shit and becomes batwoman <laughs> <laughs> she's like yeah let me just go ahead and say fuck the uh yeah fuck his like uh inheritance fuck whatever he has in his will i'm the batman now yeah <laughs> and and women I, be I'm, curious, <laughs> I'm curious how the the like the all cops are bastards like those people i wonder how they take to batwoman now because she's a cop i wonder because that was a big thing in comic books when this character first premiered to Batwoman. Because there's been a few Batwomen, like the, the name on a character. But this one here has been around for at least 10, 15 years or so. It was a Gail Simone thing. You know, oh, that yeah. friendly gal. She uh, she come out with her. You know? She's a treat. She's a treat on Twitter. Block me on Twitter posting a, uh, a song to Hedgehog and Harley Quinn meme. Which, uh, you know, she's one of the ones that's going to have to block me all over again. That's going to be fun. That's the fun thing about starting over on Twitter. Everybody that had to block me before, like your Voshes, your Ethan Kleins, yeah. uh, your Shoe On Head, they're going to have to block me all over again. <laughs> they got to deal with you all yeah. the way again. Oh, and God, they don't yeah. even know it either. They don't even they know it's coming. It. They don't even know. It's like Stone Cold. Stone Cold don't know what's coming because Stone Cold yeah. had me blocked. Hulk Hogan had me blocked. <laughs> Yo, uh, what? HH brother. Yeah. What? For real? Fucking stone, yeah, yeah. Hulk Hogan. He saw the one I got that just says in big bold letters, come on my face, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's got Hulk Hogan doing like like he's really excited about it. <laughs> I uh, I went to uh, I was in Clearwater a couple of weeks ago in Florida and he's got like a chain of a chain of beach bars down there. Sure. Hulk Hogan does. Yeah, Hulk's mm-hmm. Hulk is a fascinating character because you hear about the, the politician Hulk, about how he has worked backstage. And, 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 and even, you know, it, it was a meme for people to say, you know, I bet you he went back to the guy that was in charge saying this doesn't work for me, brother. And so cut to uh, <laughs> damn Eric Bischoff has a podcast now, 83 weeks, him and uh, uh, Ric Flair's son-in-law, Ray, uh, Conrad Thompson. They do a podcast called 83 Weeks about WCW stuff and like Eric's life and that sort of thing. And one of the questions there somebody wrote in was, did Hulk Hogan ever pull you aside on something? Because he had creative control in his contract and say, this doesn't work for me, brother. And Eric, without missing a beat, goes, oh, yeah. Yeah, there's many times those exact words come from Terry's mouth because Olivia said, uh, this doesn't work for me, brother. We got to change this. <laughs> Because you gotta, because in wrestling you gotta look strong. You gotta have, mm-hmm. you can't, you know. Hulk only, Hulk Hogan only lost a couple of times because somebody had it on there. It was like twenty six times that he lost total, and only maybe five of those times he lost completely clean. And only the two really big ones that that everybody remembers. He lose, he lost on a WCW Nitro in the Georgia Dome. I mean, it was a packed house, son. The night that they put Goldberg over, they were going to have Goldberg become their world champion, had him beat Hogan clean. Like, everybody everybody loved that one. Like, that was a big moment for Goldberg. That was one of their bigger shows that they did. Probably should have done that as a pay-per-view and not given that away on free TV. They probably probably could have built that a little better but fucking up the brand yeah i don't know you know that's that's me quarterback uh you know uh backseat quarterback uh yeah, yeah, yeah. 2020 kind of thing <sighs> the other big one is uh at a wrestlemania in the wwf i want to say it was 19 they had him wrestling rock and rock puts him over clean you know and after the match they shake hands look it was a big moment it was like this pass into the torch between hulk and the rock and I think that was one of their last matches, you know, period. Because I, I don't know, I don't know how much Rock and uh, Hulk wrestled after that, but that was sort of their, their sort of song song. Man, it- there's been a pretty successful like uh, movement of people switching in from like professional wrestling into like mainstream acting and stuff like that in movies. Like, well, you look at Rock. Roddy Roddy Piper. It goes right. back to let's go and uh, let's go back before that. Terry Funk. Terry Funk played a goon in a lot of '80s movies. You watch Roadhouse. 
Terry Funk's one of the bums at the bar that's causing trouble for Patrick Swayze. And Terry knew how to take bumps, knew how to do stuff. And, uh, you know, Patrick Swayze. Well, I think most shit people in Hollywood know how to take bumps. Am I right? Hey, hey, yeah, yeah, kind of bumps, baby. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, these are a whole <laughs> other kind of bump. And I know the CRK feels like yeah, All right, all right. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And our last yeah. fucking president, you know, he made his bones fucking off, uh, off uh, you know, WWF. That's how he became our He's president. He's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, and Anthony fucked up. the AFL. Fucked it right up oh, the yeah. ass. Ruined it. Fucked Piece the of AFL. Shit. Uh, uh, there's a lot I have been a Donald Trump fan since I was a little kid I thought Donald Trump was a fucking character and a half when I was like five or six I was like man this son of a bitch is wild because <laughs> he had the right idea of oh I'm going to get in as much bullshit as possible if Fresh Prince sure I'll do it um, <laughs> little rascal they want, me to, right. they want me to play fuck it yeah he's in the home alone for like two minutes they, well they they filmed at his place too. They, they filmed at the Trump uh, the, right. the plaza right 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 he's in it for like two minutes you know tells the kid oh yeah yeah it's right up here yeah you he's saw in Canada that they cut that little part rascals, out little rascals he's got a little bit of a part in that one he plays the rich dick kids he plays his dad so he's got a couple of scenes and a couple of lines like he's good and you know i've always liked donald trump i always thought he was a character and to see him because he made a big push into politics 20 years ago mm-hmm. right, with the reform party he thought he was going to get somewhere then just didn't take uh the 2012 i thought i thought trump was the only guy making sense up there i was like oh trump's trump's got to be the guy right and then they cucked him out of that, and they they tried to push uh, uh, what's his face with the, the Romney, the, the boulder fight. Yeah, the boulder full, uh, boulder full of women. That boulder, yeah, yeah, the yeah. binder, yeah, <laughs> binder yeah. full of women. That's what it was. Yeah. CRK, did I hear you say that they censored Donald Trump's part out of Home Alone in Canada? Yeah, they in did. Canada, they That's, like cut out that second where he's at the plaza it's telling on, the kid to move. Uh, I forget if it's on the Disney Channel or Netflix. They did that. They cut him out That's of Home Alone. Still in still in Little Rascals though. I watched Little Rascals <laughs> like, the other day. Well, He's right there eating popcorn. That one's little, not quite as much of a hit. Well, Little Rascals is also currency. Little Rascals has always been crypto fascist propaganda. Yeah, so. let's be honest. Let's be real about it. <laughs> you know what? What exactly would you define as a crypto fascist? What is Little Rascals? I would say Little it's Rascals. Nothing. Yeah, I would say Little Rascals. Rascals. I think that's the quintessential. Gang, so it's it's so right there. Yeah. Alfalfa in the gang. It's like, yeah. a, a, it's a like their birth of a nation. It's like their birth of a nation. Boys that that have. <laughs> no girls allowed. Yep. They're, they're strength and unity. Oh, they, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> so the boy supremacy. That's what it the is. The boys club. Why do you guys think right. the Manosphere loves that movie? Think about it. Why Why is that well, in the red? Yeah, think about I, it. I'll go a step further. I say I love the old <laughs> R-Gang shorts, the little rascal <laughs> package that they put on TV. Like, shit, that's some yeah. funny shit. <laughs> like, the little yeah. kids always having schemes on how they're going to make money or what, what, what you know. They always want to do something wacky or pay for something, and so they have a crazy scheme. Like, they put on a circus with dogs. Yeah, they're always yeah, getting like, one over on somebody. Yeah. yeah. They're always being little menaces, little, little rascals, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would say they're probably, as far as, you know, that, that time period of comedic shorts, they're probably the number two package. The number one package has to be Three Stooges. Well, of course. Because the Three Stooges, what happened was in their day, as they're making shorts and stuff, the studios kind of fussed them off. Like, didn't they got paid six grand a week, split three ways, the whole length of their career at making those shorts. And so oh, they got fucked. Well, they did and they didn't because in their because they had an off season where they would go and do tours, and that's where they would make their money because they own the tour. You know, like a musician. A musician puts out the record, they don't make so much off of that. But the live touring, that's where the money was made. <laughs> And so that's what the Three Stooges did. Never, and he said that they never missed a gig. I read, I read his book. I Stooge the Conquer, and Mo Howard outlined it all, son. Shit, I might read that. I oh, might write that it's down. It's a fucking dope book. I recommend everybody listen to that book. That that book, that book might have been the best book I've read in ten years. And I, I don't read a lot of books. I don't sit down and go, I'm going to read books. That's a book. I when I found out it existed, I went, oh shit, I'm getting that tomorrow. What's it called? I Stooge to Conquer. It's his autobiography. And Mo Howard writes from the heart about everything, about when Curly, Curly had a stroke. So they're on the set, going to do the movie, and it's Curly's call time. You know, and, and, and they, no, they can't get a hold of him in his hotel. So Mo goes up. He gets the key from the guy. They go upstairs, opens the door, and he sees him laying in a chair. He's got a tear running down one one cheek of his face. He's had a stroke. Oh, and like the whole side of his body's laying there just paralyzed. Hmm. And, and he, he started patting him on the cheek. You know, hey, it's okay, kid. It's okay, baby. It's okay. Because he called him babe. That was, that was what he called him, his nickname. 
And he had found out through their SAG stuff, because this this ties back into Terry Funk, why he got into doing movies was because the SAG card. If you get your SAG card, you can get apply for their insurance. So he got insurance for him, for his kids. Every, everything was paid for through the SAG. And so oh, the Screen Actors Guild, right, right, right. Mo had the SAG card, got him into the, into the hospital. Then whatever it was, 20, 30 years later, same shit happened to Larry. Larry had a, uh, the stroke. Mo was the one to take care of him to put him in the same hospital that Mo was that uh, Curly was in. And there's all kinds of wild shit about the Three Stooges too. Like the they had one that Hitler saw. You guys love this shit. The Hitler Beast. saw it. Where, <laughs> you guys love this. Where, <laughs> yeah, you love it. <laughs> where where Hitler saw it, and it was it was about the Nazis. Like they're 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 you know the Three Stooges are the good guys in this one. They they've infiltrated the Nazis and. Curly gets a painting of Hitler stuck to his ass. And the boys keep do- throwing up the Heil Hitler to it every time Curly bends over, as they should, oh saluting God. his ass. Yeah. And Beast. Hitler was so offended by it, he put a hit out on the Three Stooges. No way. Hell yeah. And Base Mo, Three Stooges. And Mo, you know, the thing about the Three Stooges was is Larry was a gambler, so he was used to seedy shit. Curly was always out in bars holding court, you know, being, being a ladies' man. You wouldn't expect Curly to be the ladies' man, but he was. But Mo, Mo was a family man. Mo had his kid. Mo had a wife. Mo Mo had like a nice little house, and that was that was his thing. Like he he didn't want to do you know any any of this bullshit, and he wasn't he didn't take kindly to hearing that. So he went out and bought a thirty eight, practiced with it, he kept it clean and holstered on him at all times. And he killed Hitler. Well, he was ready to. If a some bitch was ready to jump out, I think <laughs> I think I guarantee you, I I think for a fact Mo would have shot that son of a bitch. That's six what the movie time. Valkyrie was about. Give him six <laughs> shots. <laughs> it's like it's like going up to going up to Hitler and pistol whipping him and having yeah. like a comical like bottle popping noise. <laughs> 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 like, oh, I'll tell you this, <laughs> I'll tell you this <laughs> too. After that, after that one, they did multiples where Mo played Hitler and, the, and he was the dictator of Moronica and he had the mustache and they went hard on him. Damn, Charlie Chaplin does you dirty, and talking. then you got the Three Stooges doing you dirty. It's fuck that, man. My man well, ain't old. Well, it just goes to show you the lamestream liberal media has been around for quite some time. <laughs> Stooges. <laughs> Stooges. <laughs> you had to fight on two fronts. It's fucked up. The Stooges <laughs> did it before uh, before Chaplin. I think they were like the, the summer before. Mm, mm. Damn, man. Coming from all sides. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. Well, I want to say the boys have family from over there. Because they, uh, they were all Jewish. All the Three Stooges were all Jewish. No, I'm not actually defending <laughs> Hitler. I need to be clear. Yeah, I need to be. I don't know how deep your ties go, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and come out and just like affirmatively uh, denounce Hitler and the Nazis. He's not a great guy. Yeah. yeah, this, yeah not, have you guys heard of this guy. Hitler fella? He's done a lot of <laughs> sus shit lately. <laughs> <laughs> Hitler's going to be canceled. Honestly, man, I don't care if I lose any supporters, dude. Hitler's a fucking faggot. All right. I'm sick of this. Guy. Yeah. Speak on it. Oh God. <laughs> Speaking of that, we were talking earlier about the damn uh money for nothing video. Somebody posted a clip. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Mark Knopfler has just been just been getting away with just the hard faggot for decades. So that's posted <laughs> <laughs> posted the clip of the Dire Straits song "Money for Nothing," and it, you know, you you money for nothing, get chicks for free. It's like this old blocky 3D shit. They posted a clip of when they they crossed over with uh, Reboot. They were on the Reboot show, like the dudes moving the refrigerators and the TVs and the video. And so I had to pull up the clip of when they used yeah they used a few slurs against all, uh, and I always pictured it being Polly Shore who they was talking about. Uh, they call it the choice words, and that shit plays on the radio. Wait, why? Why does it have anything to do with Polly Shore? Because <laughs> he was the dude on TV. He was on MTV as the VJ. Okay, he was the lead man. Okay, he was on every like, hey buddy, welcome. Did he have the earrings on the makeup? He did. Okay. Verse two. See that little faggot with the earring and the makeup. Yeah, buddy, <laughs> that's his own hair. That little faggot got his own jet airplane. That little faggot. He's a millionaire. Damn. Yeah. Bars. Bars. Yeah, yeah. This is the original ether. Yeah. Yeah. And the funny part about it is, is Polly Shore might be one of the most getting ass guys ever. 
because he <laughs> he might well, he might have oh he's he's out chasing tail he's out chasing puss he is a puss man. <laughs> if he if he can get gas he'll go get it he's one of those guys he's always uh him it's like him james con and david spade are always at the playboy mansion Back in the day, that was, that was, that was always david here spade. oh david spade was hard after david spade loved gas he was a gas <laughs> <laughs> they would have him. He would come on Howard Stern. Man, after my own heart. He would, come, he would come on Howard Stern and they would have little red lights and they would have girls come on that wanted to be in Playboy and they would shine a laser light and tell them why they had cellulite and what was going on with them, why they Playboy. <laughs> Spade oh ended God. up knocking up one of those girls, one of the ones that made it into Playboy. Was this was this Sibian Sibian era Howard Stern? That would have been probably right before Sibian era. Sibian era is like two thousand six, <laughs> I want to say. Jesus the Sibian so like, epoch. I, I bounce. I, I, I tell you, I tell you the day that I. They had a fella who would call in. Uh, I, th- I believe his name was Cyrus. They would have like Cyrus from from wherever he was, like Cyrus from Arkansas, whatever it was. And they they come on one day and said, "Oh, I just got the word, Robin C- Cyrus died." Like our caller, you know, the guy that would call in all the time, Cyrus. I remember feeling so bummed out. I was like, I don't even know Cyrus. I don't know this guy, and I'm bummed out that he's dead. And I just turned the shit off and was like, "Man, like I, I had to k- go take a walk." Cause I, cause they reevaluate what I was up to. Now here's <laughs> the here's dude that I don't know at all. That I don't know this man. You right? never even seen him. I, I don't know. He, they might have had him in the the studio once. I, I don't know. I don't remember exactly what what the deal was, but uh, but I remember feeling so bummed out about that. And. And I started, you know, like I was like, all right, let's just listen like once a week. We'll, we'll kind of ease out of Howard Stern world because I would listen to Howard Stern all the time. I love Howard Stern. Like Howard Stern back in the day was the guy. And now it's like you tune in for Howard Stern. It's like he's Mr. Woke. He hates Trump. Yeah. yeah. Didn't he have like I, Hillary on and was like kissing her ass yeah. and all that? Like, I guess yeah. I'm a little too young for the Howard Stern talk because oh, I never listened to I'm Howard, t- Howard Stern. I'm too Howard West Stern. Coast. Howard Stern <laughs> would have uh, gals on. They would throw. They would do anal ring toss. That's Howard Stern. Howard Stern would have a guy on who could fart at will. I think his name is <laughs> the farter. They would have a guy on who could fart at will and, and have fart contests. Yo, know, goofy. You know, he got the original in shock jock. Yeah, yeah. He, right. Yeah, he got in trouble back in the '80s. They had a fella on, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember exactly what the gag was. They, they said he could play piano with his penis, and so yeah, with, without Stern, there's no, there's no a bunch of shit after that. There's no. And so, so they had this fella on who could play piano with his penis, and and the gag could have been they just had a guy playing piano and saying, "Oh, Robin, look at this. He's really doing it. He's playing with his penis." You know, it's it's a, it's a gag for your mind. It, you know, it's it's all smoke. <laughs> Bullshit. It's like Dungeons and Dragons. It's all crap. Right. Okay. <laughs> oh. You're creating Whoa. you're creating an illusion inside somebody's mind that doesn't really exist. And that's what the We got the, some Dungeons and Dragons respecters in the chat. Yeah, Slava's a big so DD Slava's boy. To speak up. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh I, I was trying to reevaluate what I can do to entertain folks online. I was like, oh, I know how to because I was looking around like what top Twitch streamers and shit was, and they got uh, there's a bunch of voice actors that do it. They play Dungeons oh, yeah. and Dragons. They go, well, fuck, I know how to run Dungeons and Dragons. I can do that shit. And so that's what I, I've started doing that again. I started running Dungeons and Dragons. I probably hadn't run since, God, like 2004, 2005. Like it would have been when I was in high school, last time I ran Dungeons and Dragons. But I played uh, I played some of that fourth edition. I, when I had a podcast, we played a few times on there, like 2010, 2011, somewhere around there. So is yeah. there a divide between like, yeah, I, I guess those games, like I'm associating like D&D, Call of Cthulhu, like are those or settlers of Catan like that type of is that is there like a divide between people who play that and like people who I play like on settlers consoles? of Catan's not very similar at yeah, all. Yeah, settlers of Catan is more That's of a, board like a board game. game. So there's a difference between I, here's the where the line is. You have your tabletop games, right, right, which, which I would say you know your war games on one side of that coin, and then your role playing games on the other. And Dungeons and Dragons right. kind of sits on the fence because it, it could be both. Because your war games like like Warhammer 40k, uh, that that kind of thing. Your risk and was your, your shit, yeah. And then your RPGs are more like your Call of Cthulhu's, the vampires, that sort of stuff. And Dungeons and Dragons sort of splits the difference because you can you can make it a tactical game full of little miniatures and things and have lots of stuff going on and crazy fights. But there's also a lot of heavy role playing element to it where you're pretending to be goofy 
characters and doing lots of silly voice. Yeah, I walked in on some friends that I met for the first time. Like, uh, I was like in my in a studio apartment, and I had my neighbor knock on the door, like, "Yo, you want to go down and hang out with some buddies?" And I was like, "Sure, why not?" And I walked down there, like, walked into a Dungeons and Dragons game being played, and I've never in my life witnessed that before and had no clue what it was. Just, like, like, I walked I in on an orgy. <laughs> You're just like so, this is yeah, yeah. satanic. <laughs> I was like, "What are you people doing? You people are sick." <laughs> some, fellas, <laughs> some fellas I know, they got together playing uh, the three of them, and they had ordered a pizza, and the pizza dude saw what they were up to, and that was how they got their fourth player. <laughs> wow. Nice. It's like awesome. you guys playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> and so that's kind of that's kind of that's kind of nice. That's kind of cool, actually. Yeah, that's the way it should go. Yeah. I feel like that's exactly yeah. how it should go. Like everybody, because that's the attitude I have is oh if people want to play i guess i guess we'll figure out something so you play you play a lot of regular uh, video games too trolls oh hell yeah i i was a uh briefly a games journalist right right oh, really right. did you write for any publication or were you just uh, doing yeah i did i did some publications i worked uh i did some ghost writing for some folks that everybody knows Ooh. whose names i won't say hey. but uh i, you fought I back uh, against gamergate you were the front line <laughs> i don't know about that i, I <laughs> fighting fighting back against gamergate uh Certainly shared some thoughts and opinions. That's right, for sure. Right. You, know, you had sex I, with some developers to get some uh, to get some no, access. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, not not. That's not my style, brother. Like that was the thing about uh, gaming conventions that I hated because it felt like everybody was there to get drunk and get laid, and those are two things that I have no interest in doing. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to get drunk and I don't want to get laid. I just wanted to. I just wanted to see the new video games, man. The love of the game for the love. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, so I, so we, we go and do shit like that and talk to people and meet people and go through all the booths and bullshit. And it's like, you know, four hours in, I'm like, well, I, I feel like I've done a lap around this whole place. I'm done. Everybody else is like, yeah, let's go get drunk. And I'm like, I don't know about that, brother. I want to go get some McDonald's and go to bed. <laughs> well, this is the thing I've been hearing, like, uh, from a friend of mine that was like, that there's this trend where games are becoming like fortnite fied like they're taking yeah. away single campaigns. Right. They want to co- do, games want to go free to play now. That's the move. You want to get the game in people's hands and Trojan horse it in. And then uh, pay for the add-ons. Transactions. Yeah, you want to have the add-ons. You want to have crazy outfits. Call of Duty's doing that. Or you anybody can play Call of Duty now. But if you want to play as Rambo, I seen Rambo the other day. Like, I didn't, I, I should have bought, they had Texas Chainsaw Man and uh, Saw Man. Really? But I think they wanted like 40 bucks for them. Mm. That was oh what my me, God. if I'm remembering right. And I was like, I, I would love to be Texas Chainsaw Man, but I, fuck that. I ain't paying forty dollars for that shit. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, have, what like I gotta, I gotta Warzone is bringing in fucking racks, isn't it? Like, I want to yeah, see how, how much Rambo is. If Rambo is like, one. if it's like ten bucks, I'll I'll play. I'll pay ten bucks. Plays Rambo. Ten bucks I, for Rambo. If I'm gonna play with the boys and bust out Rambo, all right. That that that's my kind of dumb. But like, uh, I only knew like you know Modern Warfare. Like this is what I grew up on, and I was trying yeah, to find like the Fortnite, new COD. Damn Fortnite! Uh, I got into playing that because my nieces and nephews were into it. Right. And if I'm gonna play the game, I gotta be good. And to be good, you gotta play. Because I had played the other shit, the PUBG, and PUBG was wild. That first year of PUBG was some of the best gaming I ever played. And then they changed the way the voice chat worked. I think that killed the whole thing. They added in vaulting and stuff too since I quit playing. And I'm curious to to look at it again. They added in like loot box shit too. I hate that. I hate the loot box shit. I never you know, once uh, played PUBG. PUBG. You know, talk about the in-game add-ons. And I just saw uh, an article like two days ago where Disney World's now featuring like an interactive ride that has <laughs> in ride add-ons that you can physically purchase with your like card while you're on the ride no that, way like, so i ain't into amusement to... parks either i don't like that like the i oh i, I understand the gimmick of it but I, I i just i never really been for it maybe maybe i read the rotten library entry about deaths at disney world too young because <laughs> there's that's a long list of deaths I, rotten.com's oh, yeah. not up but I, I, i'm sure you can find the rotten library archive somewhere yeah. I, so I, I, uh, it's funny you said that COH because I remember. So last time I went to to Disneyland, they had the uh, the new uh, Star Wars 
thing, mm-hmm. right? The new Star Wars area. It was like fairly new. And the ride there is 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 it's the it's pod bug ride, right? It's it's you you fucking stand in line for like a fucking hour and you go into a room that's basically just like on some hydraulics and it's a video game. And so you're just like, I'm a gunner and we're in a ship all together. And you're just in a box that's just kind of getting rocked oh. back and forth. So it's not even a ride. It's like one of those things you do in an arcade where you sit battle in a box tech inside. Center. It's a goddamn battle tech center for the yes. night. It's and it's a joke. It's horrible. And it's clearly just like it's just it's like more efficient with the space, the, the real estate oh, yeah. they have there. And, yeah. and, mm-hmm. and and it's definitely like trying to appeal to like zoomers in some yeah. way. Well, I'll it's tell horrible. you this. One of the gals I played Dungeons and Dragons with on Saturday, she went to that thing. She had a ball with it. And, you know, I, I, I forget exactly how old she was. I, I want, I'm going to say she's 45. You know, 45 year old woman had a ball with that. I feel like that might be the audience they're looking for. They're not looking for us. They're looking for adult women. They're looking for little kids. That's who they're trying to please. They're not. They're not looking for us. Because they're basically the same adult women and little kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I would brain agree operating with capacity. I mean, I would that. say I would say that a roller coaster, like a going hard roller coaster, is is the more masculine attraction of mm. the uh, of the uh, you know amusement park for a sure. Tower of Terror. Tower of well, I. I'm pretty Tower of Terror. <laughs> Pilled. They they they, <laughs> I, they turned it into they they took it away from uh, uh, Twilight, Twilight Zone. Zone? It, it's yeah. now it's now Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm gonna oh, sound like I'm that. gonna sound That's like one of these fucking freakish like Disneyland YouTube people. <laughs> um, purist, you're like a Disneyland purist. Like yeah, yeah, I, I, I this, you want to talk about best storytelling ever presented on TV? I think. Twilight Zone's got to be the best, right? Oh, for sure. That shit is like, crack. What's, what is better than Twilight Zone? For, for I mean, batting average wise, they got to have the most bangers of a TV series ever. That shit is like, fire. It never gets old. Whenever they the do amount, the fucking New Year's uh, marathons yeah, and all that shit. The amount shit. of great episodes, good episodes, and even good and you know decent episodes. Like there's a couple of stinkers, but but man, the the most bangers, of fire. the yeah. bangers. Uh, they they had Y'all one season it? that was hour long. I feel like some of those. They, they they go a little too long, but there's some bangers in that season too. That's the one with with Dennis Hopper as a Nazis in that season. Yeah, I heard they Dennis remade Hopper, it and it, it doesn't look so did, good. Yeah, no, it was my, Jordan Peele. Yeah, I haven't the, seen any of it. The new one's fucking shit, dude. They've done a couple of, of reboots of Twilight it. Zone. They did it in the '80s. They did it in the 2000s, and I think they they did this more recent one here. I caught one where the dude was listening to a podcast. That's the second and, one. Uh, it's the remake of I think it's what Nightmare at Ten Thousand Feet, the Shadow right. one. Yeah, and it just just wasn't it just didn't didn't hit the same way i'm like you need something on the wing like you Mm -hmm. need a physical creature the movie the fucking movie did so good oh man john lithgow seeing a thing on the wing and he he gets the gun off the guy's leg and shoots it oh Oh, they did a movie for it oh that's the best part of the movie but the The movie movie is like the movie's okay the movie's okay the 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 problem with the movie is that they're just remaking well i'll tell you the the real episode the the movie the (laughs) the movie has another problem the movie has a big problem that hangs over it that i didn't know watching as a little kid what, that someone it, died? Well, that three people died. There right. was there was what? a horrible accident yeah. on the set of... It's the reason why John Landis isn't directing big movies like he used to. Because he did the what? Twilight Zone movie and his, and his section of the movie, because it was Spielberg and Toby Hooper and Joe Dante and uh, who who else was doing it? There was, there was a couple, I think... Uh, oh, fuck. Uh, uh, Zemeckis, I think he was involved in it. But, you know, you, you uh, want... Yeah, G- George, George Miller, Spielberg... Okay, George Miller did the twenty thousand. And uh, 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 Joe Don- Joe Dante did the uh, the little kid. Yeah, the, the push him into cornfield stuff. Oh, yeah. sh- legendary! Which has, some, which has some pretty cool uh, effects in the movie. Yeah. I kind of like it. Spielberg did the kick the can segment with the old people, which is a very sweet, like like very Spielberg, very fun. Spielberg, right? Yeah, very sweet. And story. it's got the magical black person, of course. Well, yes. you know, it's Spielberg. <laughs> like it was the age. Great, so I love it. Time. but I-, I tell you, man, the 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 accident they had on the set. Because they tried to make it out like John Landis was fa- was at fault, and I, I don't know, maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. They they had a helicopter that was trying to get close for a shot. Yeah, something busted on the back of the helicopter blade, it spun it around, and it chopped wrecked. the guy's head off. Well, it chopped the, the guy and two little kids that were actors. Holy the shit! Two, yeah, the two kids were uh, they weren't SAG actors. They were there after hours. It was a whole thing. Like the unions got involved. Like. It's a, a big mess, big mess. And I think 
I think the last movie he did that was big after that was like uh, Beverly Hills Cop Three. That well, was I'm his- reading about it, and fucking Spielberg said that he was so disgusted by Landis' handling of the situation, he ended the friendship and called publicly for the end of the new Hollywood era where yeah. directors had complete control over a film. What the Cause, fuck? Because John Landis was slinging mm. dick at that point. He had done Blues Brothers, Animal House, yeah. American Tra- Werewolf in London. Now Trading that's a, places. Trading places. American Werewolf in London might be my favorite of the bunch. That was meant for uh, uh, Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi to be those leads. And I think had they got to play the parts, had they done it, you know, like five years earlier, man, it would have been a banger movie. But I, I don't know if they'd have had the the effects and stuff together like they did. But that is that is a banger of a movie because it's a comedy movie. It's a comedy first, then it's a horror movie. Yeah, it's very much that kind of thing. It's a there's a lot going on in that one. It ain't just. You well, know, I love I like that. I like how it ends, <laughs> too. I like that it ends on a decidedly like tragic horror beat. Right? It, goes, like it, it goes full universal horror flick and the old universal yeah. horror flick once they kill the monster they they don't say maybe one or two lines of dialogue and then the credits roll yeah it just it ends like done. the mummy right like you just you well, just blast him and then the movie just basically ends and it's over. yeah there, there's a great uh uh frank I, I think it was frankenstein four or five and wolfman two if frankenstein meets the wolfman the frankenstein and the wolfman finally meet up and fight and, and, you know, they wrestle around on this little set for a while. So the village people go to blow up the dam and they're going to flood this whole thing. All right. And so they, they blow up the dam. Water rushes in, floods out the monsters. And then it cuts back to the, to the other villagers that are watching. Like, wow, they really destroyed everything, didn't they? And then the credits just come on. <laughs> it's just done. That's it. No, no. That that was your whole denouement was right there. It was, oh, yep. the monsters yep. are finally gone. <laughs> credits. Yeah, I, uh, this last year uh, around I Halloween, I, I went and I watched uh, not all of them, but like a good amount of those old Hammer horror oh, movies yeah, with yeah, those Christopher. Are... I mean, just like just like most of them seem to have Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing in them. Yeah, yeah, they they were the boys. They were the ones. I caught one uh, the other day on. Uh, it was a hammer flick about a vampire hunter. Oh, man, it was dope. Mm. It was like a swashbuckling, like he was getting laid and killing people and fighting vampires. Everything. Dude, honestly, killing vampires and getting pussy, basically all a man needs. Right. I, I want to see more fun movies like that. I think that's that's Charlie's end game. Like, the, the memes to an end is for me to make crazy hammer horror style movie. Or, or at the very least, a movie that would play third on the sci-fi channel. Well, you know, it's funny. I had never been big into horror for most of my life up until, like, the last couple of years. And, like, and I think that, honestly, I think that, like, playing Call of Cthulhu tabletop had a big part in this. But, like, mm. I just kind of realized, like horror especially in film it just so because because like a lot of it is like it's a lot more mid-range budget wise it's kind of weird shit going on you know maybe not maybe not ever you know hitting super high levels of quality but like honestly kind of because of that it's like a lot of cool weird shit that you can try out in a lot of horror movies for a long fucking time even like even through the 2000s, you know, um, and I, I don't really I don't really know that that's the case anymore. I, I almost kind of feel like that, like the rise of, of the fucking Jordan Peele brand of horror is maybe kind of like the, the nail in the coffin. A I, I bit. disagree strongly. I think by the time I get to make my based horror movie, <laughs> what, I, what I have in mind is crazy rubber suit movies that are. Like that's that's the first the top layer of the onion. On the inside of the onion is the shit like the Twilight Zone, where mm-hmm. where you know the Twilight Zone is a simple story of people out on the streets. It's a hot day, and then the power cuts out, and suddenly everybody turns on one another. And and it could be and you could interpret that as anything. Everybody starts to turn on one another, and then you know two aliens are sitting up on a, on a, a hill, watching them, laughing at them. <laughs> like that's a great episode I, I forget what that was called like something wrong on maple street something like that but, but that's brilliant wait is that the one in the suburb where yeah, technology not... stops working yeah nightmare on elm stops street working everything <laughs> stops working yeah nightmare on elm street uh west craven has a lot of great ideas about how to how to work people and how to play horror and uh i uh i'm more in his death like west was a good dude mm-hmm. uh you yeah, know there's like, a lot like, of I, cold war era shit going on around the, the twilight zone stuff that was like yeah a huge factor oh, yeah. That. well i tell you one you talk about the cold war this whole woke shit this is something i've been thinking about a lot lately is some of my good friends you know six years ago dudes who were more based than i was who would say the wildest shit to get a rise out of people 
mm. would, would care, hold court and laugh and, and, and be, you know, be able to talk to anybody and have a good time. <laughs> they have be, have reinvented themselves as Mr. Woke, and it's worked out well for them. Like, I know guys that are writing for Halo, that are writing for God of War, that have big Patreons, that are doing all sorts of shit. And, you know, it seems to work out for them. Like, wishing the best in their future endeavors, but they ain't gonna hang with me. Like, they, they quit responding to my emails years ago, so I just said, fuck them. Like, like I'm done with the them, bag. Everywhere in every Career industry. Protection. Yeah, every yeah. industry, is just, you see the same thing. People are just chasing the bag. And yeah, and insulating protecting themselves and i mean i guess right. it's easy because you can just pretend to be woke even if you aren't really it's pretty yeah. easy to pretend to like it's all virtue signal and then you secure your bag and you know none of this shit it, i mean that's the thing is it's like it's like uh it's just complicated enough sounding to make it so that just like uh, uh hollow scold just like women that make tiktoks can act like they've like cracked some some right. complicated code but like right. bro, if you sit down and you try to read bell hooks or something it's not complicated stuff you can read the shit very fucking easily one of uh one of my favorite memes going around the last couple of weeks you know israel and palestine's been into it again which they've been into it since before the bible they had one of uh these two Two black fellas sitting in a computer typing, and and one walks over, shows the other one something, and he does the oh man, if I'd only thought of that. And and at the top of the page, it says uh, Israel and Palestine when they see thirteen year old girls saying "Stop War" on TikTok. <laughs> and they just go, oh, yeah, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> right, they've met their match. Yeah, all they had to do was just right. stop war, end war. Oh shit! Well, this whole right. time. Right. Yeah, that's why I'm sick of that whole conversation because it's just like, what are we supposed to say? Like, yeah, this is bad. Yeah, I think we all agree it's bad. Like, I don't know what yeah. else to say about it. Like, they need to get their shit together. Is what what needs to happen. They need to stop acting like babies, sit down and talk things out, or kill each other. Who gives it? Like, he's gonna keep <laughs> yeah. killing one another. <laughs> well, and we know which one it's gonna be out of those two. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 I need to shit or get off the pot at this point because I'm tired of talking. I, everybody has thoughts about Israel, but me. You want to know what my thought about Israel is? I don't. I have more thoughts about Freddy Krueger movies. I don't care. I, I got bigger fish to fry. I got to go to work every day. I got shit to do online. I got. I got people to entertain. I got streams to do. I got to be guests on podcasts. I ain't got time to sit down and worry about what's going on. You know, uh, with other people's shit. I'm sure for them it's very. You know, like I know guys that are in Israel. Like easy peasy. I like Easy Peasy. He's a fun dude. You know, I wish him the best. You know, that's that's their conflict. I can't I can't control what other people do. And ain't shit I can say that's going to make them people stop fighting because they've been fighting for the Bible. Like not just in the Bible, like uh, David and Goliath. That's <laughs> that's that stuff. Like that's literally that same conflict that they've been having that far back. Old Testament and shit. It's, yeah. And it's been going. Yeah, it's been going before that. They've been into it that long. And they're going to be into it long after. They'll be into it even if the planet blows up and they, everybody leaves and goes to Mars. Those people will find a way to get into it one another again and bring up old shit. Even though you know humanity has moved far beyond this shit. Everybody, right? Th- every identity wants to do that. They always invent a way to fight. That's all an identity's for is to yep. fight. Yep. You're a DC fan. You hate Marvel. You like yep. uh, WWF. <laughs> oh, you then you obviously hate WCW. Oh, you're a Democrat. Well, you have to hate Republic. Yep. Oh, you like horror movies? Well, you have to hate action or hate comedy. Right, Or right. hate romance. There you go. You hate romance movies. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, you, you can't, uh, uh, you know, you're you're a heavy metal fan? Well, obviously you hate rap. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's like consumer brand wars. Right, uh, yeah. It never ends. It, it goes from the top down. Oh, you're Catholic? Well, obviously you can't stand uh, Muslims. Yeah. You know, it just, you and can you, take it any way you want to, this shit. And, and for me, I go, well, I know, I've known many good Muslims. Like, my friend Muhammad was was a good fella like i know a guy mo known him for years like good dude work with him wish him like i haven't seen that dude in probably 10 years but wherever he's at i wish the best my man that was in uh, uh i know a dude who was uh, i worked with him he got to be in uh, a chuck norris movie back in the 80s he's seen in the newspaper in israel they wanted somebody with special forces training. He was like 22, 23, just out of the army. He was like, well, I got special forces training. I'm going to go get in the movie. And he said, you know, three months to make a 90-minute movie that ended up, and he shook his hand, you know, doing the like the gay thing. Like, the, uh, he did that. He said, you know, three months to make a 90-minute movie that, mm, you know, it's okay. But he got to do it when he was young, you know. It was a fun experience. They paid him, and he could point to this movie and be like, hey, I'm, I'm there I am. I'm sitting on the airplane with Chuck Norris. Yeah. And I think about that, dude. You know, I didn't work with that dude maybe maybe a year and a half, two years, but... 
but you, you make relationships with people along the way, and you got to judge people on an individual base. You can't you can't say all dudes are this or all people are that. Which wokies are, right? Which wokies don't do? They they also right. they do the stereo. Yeah, it's, I mean, I think anybody who genuinely hates any group of people just hasn't been around is, that many people. Like, just this is the thought that I've been uh, been going on. With. They, that takes back to the Cold War stuff. The invasion of the body, it feels like something happened to my men, my guys, where one day they woke up and they was replaced by pod. Where <laughs> suddenly they're front and center all about trans rights and all this shit. Yeah. You know, they, they, they've they done like a whole 180, like, oh, believe all women. When, when you know, uh, maybe a year before he's making rape jokes. We were just Way in the locker room together. You, 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 we were just joking about not believing women. <laughs> yeah. Way, way, and uh, well, not just, you know, on podcast shit, you know, dropping hard R N bombs and talking about 9-11 and laughing. Right, you know, right. And now they're, now they're the Mr. Woke. You and know, it's very, very strange to see. Oh, yeah. It's weird seeing everybody just put on a new cloak. But I, I've been hearing, like, it, it's even affected uh, the gaming. Because I see it affect everything. Obviously, music, whatever, yeah. movies. But the gaming thing, somebody was telling me, like, because I don't game that much. But, like, like Gears of War or whatever. Like, a lot of these games that were, oh, well, like. Oh, shit. It started in gaming, honestly. Like, in a, in a lot of right, ways. Gamergate. Right, right. Everything. Right. But, like, yeah, it's, it's sort of like the games that were, like, had more, like, teeth to them or, like, kind of grittier they're just completely safe now. Like they're completely like so. You know, there's yeah. been there's been a push. Same thing with actions. I just seen the headline today. You know, the the uh, Predator reboot has found its new star. And it was a woman. I'm no, like, that's it's... not that ain't. I don't give a shit if she's the most masculine woman in the world. That ain't what I'm looking for from a Predator movie. I wish him the best future endeavors. I'm sure. <laughs> Wait, did whoever... you did did any of you guys see the latest Predator movie? <laughs> oh, it was a piece of shit. No. Well, no, no, no. But my favorite part about it, my favorite fucking part about it, right? The whole fucking plot of it is that there's an autistic kid, and the Predators go to planets to like harvest the genetics of they like the, eat the life. That... They, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, what? they're gonna, they're gonna get the autistic kid yeah. because that's the next step in a human 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 evolution what? And, so, and so that's that was like that was a uh, that was shane black's attempt at like make making no, like a wouldn't. progressive there's a couple of things no in the movie way. that i like there's a couple things in the movie i love like there's a lot of sh- movie that on second glance i go what the fuck were they thinking like the whole the the, the prep there was a lot going on to where it was a little confusing they had a super predator who is the bad guy who wanted to take the autistic? He's guy. the black predator, right? And then they had a good predator who showed <laughs> oh up, my who jobs God. out, who jobbed out almost immediately to this other predator. Like this other predator makes that guy look like a bitch, just beats the shit out of him. Job is a wrestling term for lose, and so this guy does the job and just gets made to look like a bitch. They have these predator dog monsters, and like one of the dogs, the face turn and becomes a good guy. And, and, and it, was, it was just there's a lot of weird shit in the movie like that. And uh, Hillary Clinton talking. About guy. super predators. <laughs> the human bad guy. The human bad guy in the movie was like uh, he was doing almost like the, aliens. He he was like Mr. Corporate. It's the black guy, but he's it a was, fed. It, yeah, he was the brother doing the 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 oh shit the the guy from Mad About You. I can't think of his name. Oh fuck, he was an alien. He played like the corporate bad guy. Yeah, yeah, where you're Paul talking Reiser. about. He's yes. doing the Paul Reiser gag from Alien, where he's like Mr. Corporate and Mr. Bad Guy. And at one point in the movie, he gets the predator gun on his shoulder, right? And he's able to use it seemingly effectively. Then they go out into the woods where it's real dark. They get chased. Sterling K. Brown is the actor that plays the bad guy. They get chased by the super predator. And then in, in this darkest scene, this guy turns the wrong way and blows his own head off with his gun. And we had to rewind the movie back. It was like, I think that guy just did somebody. Because the other person watching the movie was like, did he just get killed by the predator or did he kill himself? We had to rewind it back to look. Oh, no, he killed himself. Right. But he could use the gun two scenes earlier. He knew how to use it. So which is it, honey? Like, what are you doing here? Uh, yeah, Olivia it's a pretty Munn, dog shit movie. <laughs> Olivia Munn never took her top off. So right there, <laughs> uh, minus points for that. Uh, like, if you're going to, like, what, I couldn't figure out who the movie was for. If this is Kids First Predator, because they had a lot of salty language in it. And, you know, if you're going to, like, the new Mortal Kombat had that same problem. It's like Mortal Kombat in the 90s was one of the best kids movies. Second best kids movie in the 90s was Mortal Kombat. First was Army of Darkness. Because it was, it was just salty enough, fun enough, and had, had monsters and shit going on. But kids could watch it. It wasn't a lot of, like, you know. It's like Looney language. Tunes. Yeah, it wasn't a lot of racial language or, uh, you know, cursing one another out. 
it was uh you know it's it's a good pg-13 like like army of darkness has one f word in it you're allowed one f word in a pg-13 movie mm-hmm. and as ash is like walking back through the castle at one point he pushes a guy out of the way gets the fuck out of my way like says it real quick like that perfect like you get your salty language in there for your pg-13 but this this predator movie i couldn't figure out who it was for i, I assume the 45 year old women and eight-year-old kids that's that's who i'm picturing we're, we're into this predator movie and the ending of the movie felt right out of uh damn super mario brothers where it's a big tease for the next movie some way the predator had left the predator suit that uh the jabroni white guy put on the the, the like heroic guy and i, yes. I didn't buy I did not buy this little dude as the hero either. If you're going to... Sh- I want a hero in a movie that looks like goddamn Brock Lesnar. That's who I want as the hero in a movie. Or Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, you need an approachable enough white man as a protagonist. Look- the answer is that the movie was for no one. Like, it made yeah. no sense in a lo- on a lot of fucking levels. It was so strange. You want to talk about a woke movie that has diversity and is, is an excellent motion picture. The first Predator. first Predator starts <laughs> off... Starts <laughs> off with, you know, the best interracial relationship ever presented on film you son of a bitch and arnold and carl weathers locking arms and they're both jack the gills and then you know the super diverse team uh, like they got indian guy and shane black and jesse the body ventura who's saying all sorts of salty shit and yeah, i use that gif all in, the time that handshake gif yeah, that shit is fire they go in and it feels like the end of another movie for the first like 30 minutes they're just killing the shit out of everybody that's arnold, the best part of predator arnold yeah throws a knife in a guy and tells him to stick around <laughs> then the movie turns like the predators they start slowly they start to find predator shit because they think at first these like the rebels that they're fighting are the ones who skin people alive but then they find out that this predator monster when it kills one of their guys and the dude with the minigun takes off after it starts firing a minigun off into the jungle and then all the, uh, arnold and his buddies they all go firing all their fucking guns off like that's a great scene and you just right. see arnold flexing his muscles shooting that gun off it, it honestly it kind of has the uh, it kind of has the uh the the story structure of like kind of Lovecraftian thing of like it's first actually. the first well yeah but the first half of the movie mundane normal grounded thing and then the back half is just is or more like back third is just all straight up sci-fi horror monster. So I could divide the movie into three arcs. The the first arc is that first war movie part. Yes. Second arc is they've discovered the creature and then slowly one by one it picks them all off until it's just Arnold. And then the, the third act of the movie is Arnold versus the Predator. And that, in my opinion, is the best shit because that's when Arnold has to step up his game. He's got to figure out why this thing couldn't see him because it only sees heat. Covers himself in mud, starts lighting fires. He makes all these crazy, like, low tech booby traps. He's like, all right, he's got all this alien shit. Well, he ain't been to Vietnam. Like, I, <laughs> I'm going to make punji sticks and trees and I'm going to fuck his shit up. And it is. And, and, and even at the end, when he kills the monster, the son of a bitch starts doing shit on his hand, you know, beep, boop, boop, boop. And, and sets off a nuclear bomb and starts laughing at him. <laughs> and Arnold's going to take off running from a nuclear bomb. Like, it's a fun fucking movie. Like, that is, that might be the best R-rated movie for kids because it's so fun. Because it's an alien movie. I watched it when I was like four. And I, I fucking love that. But you watch that Predator movie, that new one. The, the Predators movie where they were on the Predator planet I thought was a lot better. I thought they that that sort of moved the, for, the story forward. With Adrian Brody? Yeah, Adrian Brody. Uh, I liked there. Predators, yeah. You had Walton Goggins in there as a prisoner. And he's, like, got a shiv, and he shivs a predator at one point trying to fight him, and then he gets his skull and spine ripped out. You have a guy squaring up on a predator with a katana, right? Japanese Yakuza. Yeah. He finds the katana sword on the ship uh, uh, that uh, the other dude was on. They had all these weapons shit, and the Russian guy gets the big minigun, so you get... You know, you had... It had enough, like, like throwbacks to the old movie, but also had new shit. Like, like we've never seen a dude stand there in a, in a grassy field and sword fight a fucking predator's death. Like, that was cool. That I don't give a shit who you are. Because I, I always think, like, like watching those new Batman movies, the, the Chris, the, oh, fuck, was the Chris Nolan. You watch those Batman movies, they feel more like adult crime movies. They don't feel like fun Batman movies. Yeah. I, I, in my mind, I think, well, what's a, what's four-year-old watching? What's he thinking? Because uh, even, like, the, the Man of Steel, that was the only one of that new set that I caught, Man of Steel and Aqua, is I bet you a little kid watching the Man of Steel is bored to tears, has no idea what's going on, doesn't care. They want to see bright colors. They don't want to see muted colors. They don't want to see this shit. The Chris- oh, you don't you don't think the little kids are going to appreciate uh, Zack Snyder's biblical symbolism with Superman? <laughs> no, no. I feel like I've just took over.
over to Fed post week. No, it's oh, good. Dude. It's a good break from yeah. our usual bullshit. We, you know what I mean? We always need a break from the regular yeah. uh, politics. I, I have a I have a bad tendency to hold court. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all gravy. But yeah, thanks for coming on, man. Much appreciated. Oh yeah, yeah. That's mass not not mass bastard. Mass bastard. Right. Mass <laughs> underscore bastard. That's me. That's the new Charles one. Charles Con. Uh, I'm on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, not on Facebook. Instagram, TikTok, hey. uh, Minds. I'm on all this. Shit. Nice. Nice. Yeah, we'll link all I'm the, uh, I got all the, the links. Like, I post memes all day on shit. Like, people like me. Hey. Nice. Got the meme stash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, well, good shit. shit. Yeah, thanks for coming on, man. Oh, yeah. Anytime, fellas. All right, you have a good night. Take yeah, care, take it easy, boys. All right, peace, y'all.